Hello, everybody. My name is Bob. Uh, I am right now in uh, Autodesk Tinkercad, which is a, a free CAD program. Uh, I want to um, sort of do a video uh, documentation of uh, the building of a um, uh, automata. Uh, it's go it's going to be called uh, Moonwalking Scarecrow, uh, and uh, here's the uh, CAD for it. Uh, this is uh, the CAD just for the uh, mechanical parts of it. There's other uh, display parts um, which are not shown in this. Uh, this is just the mechanical uh, parts of it. Uh, and this is pretty ambitious for me. Uh, so I have no idea whether this will be all a colossal failure or whether this will be a success. Um, but uh, in any case, uh, here it is. This is the, the mechanical parts of it. Let's, uh, let's focus on this and let's uh, take off these, these green things are um, uh, our structure so they're, they're showing as transparent here they're not actually transparent uh, let's go ahead and uh, uh, take some of these off so we can uh, see the, the innards see the innards I'll leave that up So basically, here is the uh, right here is the hand crank uh, to the right, uh, and it will go first to an, uh, a very eccentric cam, which uh, controls the head movement. So basically, uh, every so often, uh, it's the the the, uh, the the automata itself is of a uh, a scare, scarecrow doing like a a Michael Jackson style moonwalk, uh, and so every once in a while he'll turn his head toward the viewer. Or the presumed position of the viewer, and uh, then turn his head back, and continue continue to, mo to moonwalk. Uh, so this eccentric cam here, I don't know if you can see my arrow, uh, the the red red wheel here, uh, that is um, uh, to control the head movement. Uh, these sprockets here are to, to convert the uh, uh, the direction of the uh, movement, and uh, then this controls the um, uh, will control the uh, the feet, uh, and the feet will be um, uh, moving in a moonwalking like fashion yes uh, now there's some things also that you can't see the, the scarecrow itself will be up here uh, over here I don't, again I don't, I don't know if you can see my arrow my pointer uh, the feet will be here uh, there's uh, cables connecting uh, these cranks here uh, let me go ahead and hide this hide these Uh, these cranks here will be connected to, to cables to, which are connected to these uh, uh, feet mechanism uh, which will cause uh, basically when the foot is moving forward uh, it will be laying flat and so it'll, it'll be heel and, heel and toes on the ground moving forward and then when the leg moves back uh, the uh, heel will be up so giving the illusion that it's moonwalking um, and uh, these cams here again I don't know if you can even see my arrow are, are part of the head movement mechanism uh, which will cause it to um, uh, the head to turn periodically and this uh, cam here the pink one uh, let's focus in on it this cam here will, will, um, uh, uh, will be engaged uh, briefly by this uh, the red cam uh, and then when it's no longer engaged this this weight here will cause it to to return to a, a facing forward uh, position so uh, so he at this point in the in the cams movement uh, he's, he's starting to turn his, his head to the side to look at you uh, and uh, then when this cam rotates down to the bottom uh, it'll the weight will cause it to his head to, to move back to a, a facing forward position okay so this is the base um, and it consists of uh, sort of two layers. One is the uh, layer to which uh, it will all adhere, either glued or otherwise adhered. Uh, here's the place where the um, uh, other structural ele elements get fitted into. Uh, and then the other part, uh, I got to trim some of this down uh, to make it all square. As you see, there's a there's some parts picking out there and parts picking out there. So that'll never do. But uh, that will be tomorrow, hopefully. Uh, mostly I'm doing this uh, with two things. Uh, I'm doing it with my coping saw. Coping saw. 
Ooh, the coping saw. Uh, and the uh, stroll saw over here. Whoop. Ooh. So that's the base. Uh, it'll be, I'll finish up the uh, trimming uh, tomorrow probably. Uh, and then we'll move on. Okay, very briefly, this is the, the progress I've made today. I did this yesterday. Uh, these two parts. Uh, this is going to be the wall that's next to the crank uh, that powers the uh, whole thing. Uh, and uh, if I turn it over, well, you can see that they're, they're, they're recessed in there. Uh, and uh, they will actually come out there in, in only with pressure. Uh, and that is um, to plan because when it's actually in use, it will be under uh, enough uh, pressure uh, here that it will that these uh, uh, spacers will not pop out. Uh, here is the crank. I'm uh, uh, aspiring to do everything in such a way that it is reversible, uh, which means I could take it back apart again. Uh, so um, uh, you may notice here. I don't know if you can. It'll focus in on that. Um, there's like this little wire sticking out. I'm, I'm putting everything together using cotter pins, essentially, uh, or actually paper clip pins. Uh, and so um, this part, the silvery looking thing that's got duct tape on it, and this part are held together with a cotter pin, and the uh, round thing and the shaft are held together with a cotter pin. So in theory, I could uh, undo this cotter pin yep, here. This, in theory, I could undo that cotter pin there, um, uh, and then uh, take, separate the, the crank arm from the circular thing, and then take out the cotter pin that's hidden underneath this uh, uh, duct tape, and then take the, separate the round thing from the shaft. Uh, so it's designed to be reversible. And um, uh, here I've got, here you may see I, I, I've got some graphite here to uh, to smooth the rotation. That's so actually just graphite from a pencil. Graphite from this pencil, in fact. That's an that's a, uh, artist pencil. It's a, it's a very soft pencil, so it will put down a lot of graphite. And that has been my work uh, uh, for today, pretty much. Uh, here's a, a tip if you want to use a cupping saw, uh, lubricate it with wax. And fortunately, I have some wax hanging around, so you just rub the wax on the blade. Uh, that will lubricate the blade and keep it from uh, sticking as badly and the possibility of, of breaking. So that will help smooth the uh, sawing. Oh, one more thing. I talked about the spacers, but I didn't tell you what they were. Uh, these are um, the white things, are nylon spacers. Uh, you can get a, a bunch of them relatively portably. Uh, and nylon is very good, um, let me check it out, uh, has very good uh, lubrication qualities. So if a wooden dowel is sliding inside of nylon, that's going to be a whole lot better than it sliding inside of wood. Uh, so that's why I'm using the uh, nylon spacers here uh, for these things and for basically any place where the, uh, where the uh, power shaft shafts are going to uh, pass through wood, I'll put a spacer in. I want to talk about freedom units and why in a context like this they should never be used. Uh, I am normally, pardon the chair sound, I'm normally 100% okay with all kinds of freedom units. Uh, I like teaspoons, I like cups, I like uh, quarts, I like gallons, I like miles, um, what other pounds, gallons, all that stuff I'm okay, okay with. I have no problem with that. Uh, for something like this, uh, if you're, yes, technically you could use sixteenths of an inch and thirty seconds of an inch, uh, but that's just pure folly. It's folly. Um, millimeters are a very nice, useful element to uh, to use. Uh, they're 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 so small enough to where, for woodworking at least. You, you would hardly ever need anything smaller. I mean, maybe once in a blue moon, I would need a half a millimeter. Most of the while, you know, a millimeter will work fine. You know, I don't have to go smaller than a millimeter. Uh, if I had to go smaller than a millimeter, then you have a half a millimeter. You have a tenth of a millimeter. Uh, when I when I um, uh, use uh, Tinkercad, 
uh, my, the snap on the grid is a ten, usually a tenth of a millimeter um, to make sure things are centered right. But um, uh, I would never, or at least not in this context, ever use a tenth of a millimeter for anything. So a millimeter is a nice round figure for, for doing things of this size. Um, and uh, and so and it, it comes in a decimal decimal system that is very useful. Uh, so for something, something like this, I'm uh, metric all the way. For for everyday life, gallons and cups and ounces works fine. Uh, for something like this, it has to be millimeters and you know centimeters and meters, which is all all really the same thing. It's all it's all millimeters, one way or another. Okay.